Hi students, welcome to this course, PLC Automation, an introduction to programmable large controller. I am Professor Yao. Basic to access robot with PLC screenser control. The keyword, the address lower left initial position. The step-by-step -step sequence of operation. In the down left position. For powered numeric pneumatic solenoid. A later diagram with interlock. Operational matrix, work cell, counter sink and counter board, a program catalog. Basic to access robot with PLC sequencer control. We progress through two schemes of controlling the basic pick and place robots shown in figure 20.1. We use switches first and then a drum controller sequencer. The robot used for illustration starts operating from the position shown, which is the at rest, lower left, initialize, initialize position. The step-by-step -step sequence of operation to move a part from position A to position B is as follows. 1. Arm is initially in the down left position as shown. Gripper is open and not extended. 2. Arm moves to upper position. 3. Arm rotates to right. 4. Hand extends to position A. 5. Gripper closed, gripping, gripping part. 6. Arm swings back to the left position B. 7. Gripper opens, releasing part. 8. Hand retracts. 9. Arm lowers to the initial position. Assume that the robot has four powered pneumatic solenoids. If all solenoids are off, no air is applied to the robot's actuators. In this initial position, the robot is in the lower left position, with the hand retracted and the gripper open. Energizing each of the four solenoids caused the following action to occur. Rotate. Arm rotates full right. Raise. Arm rise to the upper position. Extend it. Extend. Hand extends from the arm. Grip. The gripper closes. An operational matrix for the robot to move apart from position A to position B is shown in figure 20.2. And O indicates the opposite position, down left in or open. 
A simple control system for the robot shown in figure 20.1 could consist of four switches, one for each motion. One disadvantage of the four switch control is that someone would have to do the controlling continuously. In addition, turning off a switch would not immediately stop the arm. It would a spring back a spring return to its initial position, which would be hazardous to anyone expecting it to stop immediately. There could also be problems in mechanical interferences during operation. In the upper position, with the arm extended, moving the arm down could back off the arm on the conveyor below it. Also, if the gripper opened up while the arm was making a swing, the part would be dropped or thrown outward. For this and other reasons, a later diagram with interlock and a sensor included for the robust control should be developed. We do not develop the complete later control system in this chapter but we do develop a drum controller sequencer program of the type commonly used for robotic control. Two basic programs for controlling the robot of figure 20.1 are shown in figure 20.3. The first program is a peer version of the switch relay systems. The second is a DR function and a register. The DR is imposed at intervals by a timer. The timer's preset times are determined by the interval or intervals required for each operation to be completed. There are some possible operational problems. If a pneumatic cylinder failed, or sometimes because jammed, the PLC program would continue unabated. There could be equipment damage or even personnel injury. Additional programming would be necessary to include interlock, sensors, positive emergency stops, and the like. The robot previously described is more accurately called fixed automation. Several different move sequence would have made, made it a true robot. If, for example, you occasionally move the part from B to A instead of A to B, you would need two programs with different on-off patterns. The ability to change quickly from one program to another makes the system robotic. The insertion of different register patterns could be accomplished by move functions. Know that a robot is loosely defined as a programmable manipulator. 
Consider the robotic control for the work cell shown in figure 20.4. The part may come in on conveyor A or conveyor B and go out on either A or B. There are three possible process operations in the work area. Drill, half inch or three quarter inches, counter sink and the counter bore. This requires a program catalog of up to 32 different programs. The various possible combinations are shown in figure 20.5. We do not write details PLC programs for the work cell operation here. But we do show the PLC programming system in block form, as in figure 20.6. This picture shows the basic pick and place robot. These figures show part movement robot operational matrix. This picture show PLC program for robot control. This picture shows work cell with drilling, boring operation. This picture shows the combinations of operation. This picture show programming scheme for the work cell. Homework. Handwriting or keywords and submitting them to course Facebook. Just do the online quiz and see you next time.